led you to believe that vitamin D would be useful in the treatment of osteosarcoma? Osteosarcoma is a cancer that you typically see in teenagers, occasionally in younger kids, occasionally in older adults, but it's a cancer that doesn't occur very commonly. There are about 500 to 800 cases every year in the United States, so it's not a real common type of cancer, but it's one that we've made some progress, but not a lot of progress over the past couple of decades. It's a cancer that's treated initially with chemotherapy and then eventually with surgery. The chemotherapy protocols, though by and large, haven't changed for about the past 20 to 25 years, which means that our survival really hasn't been improved. It's this overall survival is still in the 60 to 70 percent range. So it's a cancer where we really need to find a different way to try to, to find something else to treat it, to add something else into the chemotherapy regimen. And so what did you find out when you began to test vitamin D with osteosarcoma cells? Essentially what we found with vitamin D, again in pretty much a dose-dependent fashion, was that you slowed the cells down so they weren't replicating as fast, and you were essentially turning them into normal bone cells that were expressing the same mineral that, that you would see with, with regular bone. And that's what you were hoping to find? That's what we were hoping to find. What does this mean for patients? This could potentially be another tool to add into treatment of osteosarcoma. The chemotherapy that we use now is great at killing the cancer for most patients and to some degree, but there also are significant side effects on the heart or the kidneys or bone or you know depending on which drug you're looking at. The beauty of vitamin D is that again at relatively normal doses it's not going to have a long-term side effect like that. And when you're, when you're dealing with growing kids, that's something that you really need to be concerned about, is yes, you want to try to eradicate their cancer, but you also, if they do survive, want to understand what those drugs and that treatment's doing them 20 and 30 and 40 years after they've been treated. And with vitamin D, you're not going to have to worry about that. The other beauty of vitamin D is as we're looking at increasing costs in health care and what can we actually afford, vitamin D is incredibly cheap. So you're adding in a drug that is hopefully going to be efficacious, hopefully have more people survive with fewer side effects. It really is extremely inexpensive.